Hey guys, so today I am going to be answering another one of your questions. Today's question comes from Gaharani Mohammed. Why don't you talk about Linux? I think it's GNU Linux. We need to fix this idea. Saying GNU Linux won't make our lives any harder, I think. Okay, so this is a very controversial question, even though it might not sound like it on the surface. In fact, it's such a controversial question that there is a Wikipedia uh, article dedicated to its controversy. So, as you guys know from the videos that I make on this channel, I tend to refer to GNU Linux as Linux. And the reason I do that is because Linux is a bit of a catch-all term. There are um, operating systems which are Linux-based, as in they use the Linux kernel, but they don't necessarily use the GNU software and the GNU libraries that go along with it. Uh, and, of course, the, the chief example of this is Android. And I think Android is such a Linux success story that it certainly deserves to be noted. But then I guess on the other hand you could say, well, Android isn't GNU Linux, it's not desktop Linux, it's Linux but applied in a very specific context on mobiles and tablets. That being said though, um, I think that is a, you know, just, just referring to GNU Linux and not recognising the huge achievement that Android is, is possibly sidelining the Linux foundation a little bit, but then you could also make the, um, the other sort of accusation that by not referring to it as GNU Linux, you are kind of sidelining the GNU elements to it a little bit as well in the same breath. So, again, it's a controversy. Con controversy. So, for those of you, and I know that you guys do exist, because you do express yourselves in the comment section below, what would Linus do? Uh, he believes that um, saying uh, Linux is perfectly fine. He says that he understands that GNU Linux is a little bit of a mouthful, even though it may not necessarily be accurate. There have been other um, uh, ideas thrown around about calling it um, ling Lingus, uh, whereas he's sort of putting a G, which sort of represents the the GNU part of it. Um, unfortunately, I think it's a little bit too late to actually make that uh, that name change, uh, as well as the fact that then you'll have Linux and then Lingus, which again doesn't sound like a very good name. I don't even know if I, I've got that name, uh, but it, it is a, like it's a punny name, and uh, and it doesn't sound very professional. That's what Linus says, and I, I, I'm inclined to agree with him on that. Um, so the thing about um, Linux or GNU Linux and uh, a lot of people that, that develop it. Um, are very, 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 very intelligent people, um, and they're significantly more tech savvy than I will ever be. But that being said, um, I, a lot of people who do software development maybe are not the best choices for PR people, for example. And I think that there is a PR angle here, and I think that um, PR is integral to the success of GNU Linux. And one of the sort of cornerstones of PR is what you name things and it needs to be easy to say, easy to spell and somewhat understandable. Linux is pretty good with that. I mean it works well in a wide number of languages and for those of you that do speak a lot of language or, or languages or, or sort of uh, you know a, a, a not from English speaking countries, let me know how Linux as a name just sounds in, in, in your uh, native language. I don't think it's translated from country to country. I think Linux is the name that, that goes that is effectively universal but again correct me on that if I'm wrong. Um, but I think I haven't got a problem with just the name Linux. I don't think that there's any requirement for a name change there. But in regards to GNU Linux to refer to the GNU libraries as well uh, to me, it makes more sense to refer to it only really in a technical capacity because I think the PR element is somewhat um, relevant. Um, and I think that it's particularly relevant when you're talking about something like Steam OS because now we're talking about um, iterations of, uh, of, of Linux and GNU Linux um, in ways where millions of people are using them rather than just tens or hundreds of thousands. Um, and a lot of you did express in the comment section of a previous video that you don't think SteamOS is going to take off. And I think that maybe this is a video for another time, but I'm divided on the issue. And one of the reasons I'm divided on the issue is because when the PlayStation uh, 4 launched, and even the, uh, and, and the Xbox One, uh, they actually released with a very limited set of games libraries. Whereas, of course, with SteamOS, if it were to be released tomorrow, you would have more AAA titles on it. Um, or at least as many AAA titles on it as the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 had on release. Not to mention, of course, all the indie games. I think that the Steam OS um, is possibly for maybe a new generation of console gamers, console gamers who are perhaps a little bit more savvy than than very very casual gamers. Um, and I think that it could apply to uh, to to people who might have shifted themselves onto the PC just because consoles couldn't deal with their sort of complex demands when it came to gaming. And I think Steam could uh, settle in that middle ground quite comfortably. It also will allow for um, modular, 
modular upgrading as far as I understand for a few of the Steam box models and if that's the case then it could very well be a cost effective alternative to um, to the other consoles. Uh, also on that basis we've got to understand that um, the Steam box isn't going to be like the Steam box 1, the Steam box 2, the Steam box 3. It's going to be an evolving console and I think again that's going to, if it doesn't succeed on launch, which there is a very good possibility that it won't because I don't believe that they've been um, forming the narrative that fits in people's minds in the same way that Xbox One and, and uh, PlayStation 4 have in terms of a, uh, a marketing narrative. But um, the idea that you could buy a Steam box and it would actually last longer, as it were, and there would be games being made for it in a longer cycle, uh, then that could perhaps appeal to people who um, who who want to you know save money or spend less on a console, more on games. Especially because you got to, we've got to understand that the the most recent or one of the more recent uh, console generations with the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 were one of the longest console generations ever, if not the longest generation of consoles ever. And that's really worth bearing in mind. The reason it was the longest um, generation of consoles, as in the, the longest lifespan or longest cycle, is because people just didn't have the money to splash out on consoles, so it just made more sense to keep developing more games for these consoles and then release a, um, a, uh, a, a new generation of consoles when people had a little bit more money, and that's what they did. However, once we get more used to the usual console cycle, which is about three to four years and then a new console will be released, um, then I think people can start actually looking towards the Steam box for something that might last a little bit longer. You might want to buy a Steam box that will last maybe 10 years or a Steam box where you can just upgrade piece by piece rather than having to buy a whole new console time and time again. And I think that might be where the market lies. Again, it's very... Um, difficult to know and um and i think that there are certain ways in which the steam box will succeed but again you know it's not guaranteed it could fail but um when we are talking about um linux in in iterations that are going to be used by millions upon millions of people because whether or not the steam box is a success or not it will sell it will sell more than a million units i can i can near guarantee that um i think that um we need to, you know, we need to have our PR hats on, and people are not going to go around. They're they're not going to change the name. You can't like it. I mean, it's too. It's almost too early and too late at the same time to change the name or to change the common reference to it in marketing materials. Let, and of course, it, it's it's not even like it's a community decision. It's almost like it's not the decision of GNU Linux to actually know what to refer to itself as. Um, uh, it's certainly in regards to marketing and PR. Uh, obviously, GNU Linux is the the name of GNU Linux from a particularly um, technical point of view, but it ain't going to go down in advertising, and it's the it's the PR department that, that basically draw draw the line on on what it's called. And Steam have been very good to Linux in the capacity that they haven't hidden the fact that it's a Linux based operating system, um, and that they've done a lot of they've given a lot of publicity to Linux, and I think that that's great. And I think that once we start seeing the Steam box um, in flux. Um, yeah, I think I think that we kind of, uh, uh, you know, the the say is not in our hands. Will it make our lives any harder saying GNU Linux to Linux? I think it actually probably will. Not just on a um, sort of a verbal level, but also uh, there could be. It's not necessarily always obvious whether or not something you're referring to is Linux based, or whether or not it's GNU Linux based, or both, or whatever. Um, so it is a bit, it's an easier term, and it's a term that people just know what you mean by it as well. It rolls off the tongue a lot easier, just, just saying Linux. And um, and people don't necessarily know what GNU is, and nor necessarily should they know. If you are, you know, you know I, don't, I don't know if it's fair to expect everyone to know as much about the software that they use as you and I do, because I know that this channel is primarily watched by software enthusiasts. So I think that we need to allow a little bit of leeway for people who are not... Um, long-standing members of our community or in fact maybe not members of the sort of open source um, community at all. Um, that's my thought on it. I'm certainly not going to hold it against anyone that does want to use the term GNU Linux. Um, in fact, especially when it comes to things like um, uh, talking about it in text, then I certainly have significantly more time for it because it's it just seems to sit fit in there a lot more. But GNU Linux quite possibly maybe you know people might even consider it 
something or might people might misinterpret it as something entirely different from Linux altogether, in which case it can then in fact do more harm than good. Um, and I don't know whether or not that might be a verbal thing or whether, you know, GNU Linux and Linux, um, you know, is, is it possible that someone who isn't paying too much attention might think that those two separate expressions or two separate words rather than someone just putting GNU in front of the word Linux. I don't know. Um, but from a marketing and PR standpoint, and I think that even though a lot of a lot of um, uh, sort of software enthusiasts don't often put that, uh, you know, look at things in it from a PR marketing standpoint, and I think that it is kind of difficult once you're so involved in a community. It's very difficult to look at that community from the perspective of, of an outsider. Um, I cannot. I've never heard someone who is not a software enthusiast enthusiast refer to it as GNU Linux, and I can't even begin to imagine explaining them the difference and why that difference is important. So I think that we need to just simplify things as much as possible and just end up calling it Linux. Um, but I think that sometimes the the sort of the open source slash Linux community can can make things more complicated and difficult than they need to be as well, and they can sometimes be specifically. PR unfriendly, I guess, in the sense that um, a lot of distributions, some of which are named very, uh, uh, are aimed very much at new people or new people uh, coming over to Linux from Windows, um, and you go onto uh, specific distribution websites, and it will give you three main points about this operating system. One of those three main points being this operating system is open source, um, as if that's what. Like that's the first question that your you know lay people are going to ask that that people who are new to Linux are going to ask is it open source? A lot of people probably or possibly don't necessarily care. Um, I have never met you know I I do not meet people who are unfamiliar with software knowing or caring the difference about open source. Now it's fan like I care about the difference and I know about the difference and so do so many people who watch this channel, most people who watch this channel. And I think the difference is important and I think the difference is relevant. But it's not one of your top three selling points of a distribution. It's something that you put on the maybe at the about page or it's a logo that you include, you know, those little logos that go on the bottom of the website with the little open source um, logo and everything like that, but it's uh, but and I think that sometimes that we can kind of get our priorities as a community mix you know mixed up and and to assume that the things that are important to us are going to be important to everyone else and the things that that sell us on an operating system are going to be the things that sell everyone else. But we are really into our software and we care about how it works in ways that 99% of people don't. And I think that maybe we need to think about how we structure our language to be more inclusive and to um, to be more uh, and and to help inform people who are not as clued up as we are um, and, and I think that using uh, overly technical terms can certainly be a turn off to a lot of people so I'm generally on the side of simplicity in our language um, and to look at things from a non-software enthusiasts point of view uh, and I know that might be a little bit um, strange coming from some from someone who runs a channel talking about pretty in-depth stuff in regards to computer software but um, but I, I think that one of the big benefits of open source is our inclusiveness. And I think that it's almost undeniable that the more people that use open source software, the stronger it becomes. Um, and I think that we need to start thinking about sort of um, making our community as accessible and inclusive and as friendly as possible. And I think we've had some great successes over the years. Um, and I think we're going to continue to grow with that being one of our biggest strengths. But let's not... Uh, turn away from that now and start, you know, using overly technical language, which might be confusing and intimidating to a lot of people. But thank you very much for the question. It's a very controversial one, and I know that many of you are going to disagree with me. But like I say, um, I kind of feel that it can sometimes be maybe a little bit exclusive to use overly technical terms, and GNU Linux is definitely one of those terms. Thank you very much for watching. That's about it from me today. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.